friends, the growth of the Indian overwatch industry has been fashioned by some people who have led incredible lives on the Indian overwatch landscape. One such person who has really made a huge difference to this industry is none other than Mr. Nabendu Bhattacharya. Nabendu, it's such a pleasure to have this conversation with you today. Thank you. It's it's pleasure is mine. Thank you. <clears throat> Nabendu, uh, you started very young in this particular industry. Uh, at that point in time, how did you think about a career in the OH industry? See, it goes back exactly 30 years uh, from now. Uh, it was 1993, I remember. I was fresh out from uh, my college and that time it was uh, basically I was, uh, my family is into creative businesses. Uh, my brothers, my father was a classical vocalist. You know, Bengalis have this art and culture as a fashion. So we had that. I come from that uh, basically family. And uh, so I was an uh, intern in one of the company called Ulka Advertising, which is presently called FCB Ulka. Uh, I was working there and uh, gotten an opportunity in terms of, you know, through the newspaper, you just put your application and I got to know something called Selvel came out in front of me, went to a couple of my then clients uh, called Polar and stuff and they said, oh, Selvel is a large company, you can go for the interview. They started from there. Yeah. All right. So, you know, if I may ask, when was that? So it was 1993, uh, about April, May types. I went for the interview. In that interview, kind of I thought I have huge client references and I said, you know, Polar, ITC, some of the company I work for. And this gentleman who was taking interview, he said, oh, you are taking two uh, clients name. We have 200. Right. So you come to this company and you see that you will you will have 200 in front of you. So that was that. All right. So starting in 1993, uh, when you started out, did you really think that your life belonged to the Indian OH industry? Uh, really not. Uh, but what fascinated me, especially uh, it is yes and no, because that time Selville was known or particularly this kind of industry, OH industry was known for a board company. Uh, typically, it used to be hand-painted billboard, not so glamorous industry. It was that kind of, you know, you know, typically view about the industry. Uh, but when I went for the interview, uh, it changed my mind because uh, interviewer that time, Mr. Niyogi, he kind of gave me a brief understanding and this is a will was basically a national company. So, so I thought, why not? Let me take a chance. All yeah. right. So you also saw this transition from what was all, always called as outdoor advertising to then out of home, which actually meant that the canvas of advertising became so much more broader. Uh, at which point in time did you think that, yes, I need to do something really, really substantial in this industry? So I tell you, uh, ever since I joined this company, first of all, it was a Calcutta headquarter company I took up a challenge saying that I don't want to be in Calcutta, I want to go out. And uh, the question was that uh, why outside of Calcutta? I said opportunity is much more. So then Bombay and Delhi was a choice given to me. I picked up Delhi. So I always used to look for opportunities. And uh, so Delhi came as an opportunity. Again, after three, four years, I thought it's too much. Then I left Selwell and went to Dubai. Uh, to Emirates Neon. So I was looking at opportunities and I never wanted to stay static. Then again came back and then Mudra happened because Mudra was starting their out-of-home division and I set up their out-of-home division called Prime Side. So it was a gradual process. Out-of-home was not known in that point in time as uh, the industry. It was more a outdoor, outdoor, more a billboard, billboard story. Right. Okay. It happened when from Mudra I moved to Ogilvy. And that is when I came and I saw the larger campus. Actually, there was a lot of discussion about uh, out of home. Interesting. Uh, Nabindu, this was also the time when television grew phenomenally in India. And of course, it continued to grow and still does. And then much later, 
the turn of the millennium, we had the digital economy also showing its uh, early stage of development. And today, of course, it's one of the biggest uh, media channels. So how did you continue to be in this particular industry? Were you never considering the option of actually branching out into some of the other media channels which are so big? Or was that something that really made you stick on to this medium so for this long? See, uh, post, uh, I tell you, when, when Ogilvy happened, I saw that, uh, I, you know, I had this challenging mind saying that, okay, am I really getting obsolete? Is this medium is going to be obsolete and therefore my career? So, I thought even outside of Ogilvy, what is happening in Ogilvy? Ogilvy was mainly a creative agency. Uh, while out of home was a very, very large flagship landscape, Ogilvy landscape used to be the flagship brands of Ogilvy. It was a number two in their list from after television. So, a lot of importance, a lot of uh, growth, a lot of understanding, learning came from Ogilvy. But slowly, slowly, we started thinking, you know, where there are a lot of chaos and they are the opportunity. And I found that was an opportunity. So therefore, I created my uh, organization called Milestone. I said, so let's let me try and see that, okay, how it can be seen in a different lens and can we really challenge the status quo which exists in the industry. And status quo in terms of your planning, in terms of the way business is done, the, in terms of investment in the industry, in terms of getting fresh talent into the industry. Okay. So end of the day, what is a canvas? Canvas is a, you know, it's, it's a rectangular or a, you know, square format. So television is also in that point, it's a canvas. Okay. Now, how, what do you make out of it is something is uh, what I always knew that it has a lot of opportunities and it's going to be huge and not too many people are passionate about this business or the industry. So I thought, let's beat sticking to this place rather than, you know, swimming in an ocean, I will swim in pond and I love doing what I'm doing. So I tried doing that and now I see that sky is the limit because now I see, you know, television multiplied by, you know, 1000 times bigger screen which is coming up. Okay. Just imagine the opportunity, what we can't do, okay, in this space. We can do everything. So eventually, so that's that's where the opportunities and it is not static, it is dynamic, it is every time, you know, you, you can build animation, you can build content, you can do whatever with this uh, business. So I think sky is the limit in this space. Uh, Navindu, we'll fast forward to the time when you founded Milestone Bank Account yourself, where you, it was a milestone by itself actually. Uh, that was the time when you took the entrepreneurial plunge. Tell us about those initial days of what it felt like. Did you at any point in time think that, no, I think I should take the U-turn and go back to a more secure professional, you know, salary job, uh, which always is quite attractive versus actually taking this big leap forward into the entrepreneurial uh, you know, space and then developing an agency. You did fabulously well, but how was it like initially? So initially, I tell you, it was, uh, it was like while you are thinking about it, and you are trying to create this at the same time you have your EMI's pressure you have really you have taken house you have taken car all are on EMI so those kind of stories going on during that moment and at the same time there are other people who are coming in and telling you discouraging you saying that listen okay you have a ready job two three other companies group companies are coming and offering you job the moment they got to hear that I put in my paper in OM and there was no 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 question about what is the investment where is the money so nothing the only thing i had is the courage and i knew my job i was very very extremely uh, extremely uh, happy and extremely courageous i knew i believed in what i was going for and all that i needed to do is i needed to just take a plunge took some of my colleagues, made them believe that, listen, outside of this Ogilvy name, what else they are adding apart from the brand name? If we know our job, what is the worry? And initial, I tell you, it was a six months to one year journey, which was the tough one. It is volatile. I heard my colleague's wife calling me saying, listen, 
my husband is crying and he is not receiving any mails and uh, what's going on types and so and that is when not only about you know keeping the strength as a leadership in your mind taking everyone else's pressure on your head and i said anyway we knew that we have what we are going for and even if we do nothing we could manage to get an investor so therefore i said two and half years we don't do anything we'll still keep getting what salary we were getting what else we need okay all that you know courage i had to put in on people and strength i and i believed in my you know strength or I, we believed in our strength that what we know rest i think in 6 months time things changed we had more than dozen clients largest of the brands everybody they started coming in and then it was all history absolutely fascinating uh, nabil uh, tell me uh, when you started milestone by then india had already seen specialist agencies and with global uh, you know, belonging to the global groups already here so when you started a specialist agency uh, how different uh, uh, you wanted that agency to be and how successful you were in actually achieving that so i i i figured out uh, one thing even that is uh, that is starting with my existing company ogilvy to any other group companies uh, they all became complacent they thought it is supposed to be coming to us anyways because we are globally aligned and uh, so what there is if there is no no uh, proper tool no proper data why do we need to invest we don't need to do anything and that is when i went and i said no this is a requirement because i was the client facing guy i was getting all the time from clients point of view they used to ask questions that we'll spend this money but what is the return and we used to look like a joker in front of client and that is when it came in my mind that if i can address these issues a is transparency b is data okay c is creativity then we are game and we knew our job so all these three things none of the good companies were addressing and we came and challenged and we addressed and some of the group companies international group companies client milestone used to service okay that was the result right and never do uh, oh is a people's business after all right it is uh, it's all people all the way uh, and you have this tremendous ability to attract good talent but how do you do that uh, this is not an industry where the talent base is so broad that you can just pick people from anywhere so what is that mantra for putting together a great team see what i believe in uh, people uh, story is people end of the day they look at how am i treated what is need for me and what is my growth story end of it they 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 follow a you know manager they do not follow an organization necessarily because organization at times becomes factory they have less of emotions and i tried building that family and emotion belongingness i tried putting them uh, our our profitability percentage with them i tried you know uh, behaving with them like a family and end of the day it is human being human being will do 200% or 20% depends on what kind of value what kind of value it's coming into them what kind of behavior you are uh, you know how you are involving them how you are inspiring them how you are engaging them with yourselves and therefore i can i know we used to very often i used to go from ogilvy and i used to say that you know our attrition rate is hardly 2% 3% and let me tell you this at milestone it was no different we maintained that 2 3% attrition rate even in milestone which was independent out of home company and uh, and they continued with us for you know though it was a very short lived journey within 3 to 4 years then shu came and acquired us and almost you know in 10 years time i was exit i exited the business you know not that it was by design but uh, somehow that's how it happened globally when you align with uh, companies but i think uh, yeah that was a story that people can stay with you provided okay you inspire them you engage them you involve them okay all the way and they see there is a value there is a growth there is a behavior 
so the the culture you build that's more important than anything else so they look at the leadership Fantastic. that's a great story and a great lesson for uh, an inspiring lesson for a lot of organizations that are in the business uh, navindu you had a, also a, a very grand exit from the organization in the sense that you did very well and uh, people who worked with you also did fabulously well and uh, you left behind milestone which was your creation and uh, a lot of people after such a great success you know they tend to hang up their boots and say that you know not let me live life but uh, i think the entrepreneurial streak that is in you is seems like it's permanent so you came out of milestone only to create a new one which is ideacafe.agc so tell us about ideacafe.agc is it another milestone is it something else so uh, ideacafe.agc again i am a person i you know it was it happened by accident again so uh, i signed a contract that was supposed to be 3 years non compete i decided i'll move to us okay i didn't know really i'm a first time entrepreneur so i had no idea that 3 years is going to be how painful okay but covid happened i could not move to us so i had to stay here and that 3 years introspection gave me lot of lessons so i tried investing into uh, a couple of you know startups which is more than 3 dozen startup i uh, invested as angel investor with indian angel investor and there are other places so i thought that i'll be a passive investor then i said no uh, after 2 3 years i realized that i i'm a doer actually i cannot be a passive investor i rather want to you know i want to roll my sleeves and today also i'm not wearing what he's wearing so i roll my sleeves and i get on to do work and i go and jump directly into the uh, business so then i realized that and couple of my existing uh, you know founder they were pressing me saying that nobindu why not why not once again and then after reading lot of books and getting inspiration from many people uh, i thought why not if this is my passion what is there to hide so i just waited for the exit period and just 3 4 months before i started thinking that okay let me go sit in an office and try and see that okay if what can be so then i realized that uh, there's a lot of uh, you know there's a again transformation happening so transformation happened when i uh, according to me when i set up milestone now it's a different kind of transformation where in government started giving approvals on digital you know uh, digital out of home you know screens and across india no sooner last year vci attended uh, which is not even a year and post that even in that vci i saw there are lot of people who came who are from the software side from the hardware side from different places i attended us uh, dpa there i saw lot of software guys are coming in so i could see that difference happening and since last vc to till date vc what i see is there is a huge amount of screen started coming up huge amount of conversation happening huge amount of creative animations started happening okay so i said why not let's jump into this space uh idea cafe name came because i was in goa i thought that i'll move in there post covid and we were all were thinking that probably our existing will be uh, nobody knows so let's go to less densely populated city where probably i can you know call it little longer period types but eventually what i realized that after two and a half months three months evenings are boring how much of party you will do and how much of you know sack you will go so i tried finding out then i thought that okay let's create something uh, so goa has only you know lounges and cafes you cannot think anything else beyond lounges and cafe so i thought why not create idea and cafe together so wherein you run idea business out of a cafe and then cafe can run on its own that was the original idea that during the day time it will be office during evening it will be cafe okay so that was the whole idea when i came into bombay because god didn't happen i came came back after two and a half months and then i realized that okay let me go and sit in an office and then start thinking and when i thought i said okay let's continue that idea cafe some day i will have a, a cafe where i'll run my advertising agency period okay that's my dream i can do that in bangalore 
where I am here today. I can do that in Goa, I can do that in Delhi, I will. So Ogilvy and other media agencies, the difference is other media agencies generally out of them is the media. Okay. So it sits with the media agencies. Ogilvy was only such one place where a creative agency was housing out, out of home. Okay. Right. So therefore, I believe the initial people who got an opportunity to work with Ogilvy, okay, they are very, very creative in mind. Because eventually, idea used to come from even the gentleman Piyush Pandey. Idea used to come from any creative people. They will come to our desk and they'll say, why can't it be done like that? Idea used to come from all of us. We used to go back to them and say that, why can't it be done like that? So, I thought end of the day, it is an idea business. Mm. And most of the time, what we put in there is a waste of time because it's a waste of money. It's a typical cut paste of press creative gets into out of home in a static billboard. And now it is more a OTT, you know, content is just put in there. So I thought there's a huge gap, which is the content space. And that's the space we are going to address along with the other things what we do. So this time onwards, Idea Cafe is all about the content creation and 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 an idea, a cafe with lots of ideas. Uh, maybe the fresh talent is an idea. Maybe the you know bringing in content creativity, bringing in difference in terms of creative thinking. So all of it together is an idea. We are in the business of idea, and that is what we are going to drive. And we'll be a full service agency eventually. Excellent. Uh, I think uh, you talked about idea and cafe, but your ideas are so strong that I don't think there's chance for a cafe to exist where work can happen 24 hours. <laughs> uh, well, uh, you talked about the creative side of business, which is uh, really like the dark side of the moon, right? It doesn't get to be seen so often. Uh, uh, well, dark side of the moon doesn't get to be seen at all. In the case of OH, you do get to see a bit of innovation and good creativity sometimes. But you have uh, decided to focus a great deal on the creativity side. Do you think with that, we can expect to see more business coming into work? A uh, lot more. Uh, you know, some of the facts I was just watching. So we have to take all international examples. So 47% of the entire canvas of out of home globally uh, are basically uh, driven by, I mean, they spend more than 20% in their out of home business. And it is largely driven by the creative strength. So uh, while we see global average is 6% in the overall uh, level, but actually some of the companies like Twitter, Snapchat, Coca-Cola, okay, some of the companies, Google, they spend more than 20% on out of Apple, yes. more than 20% on out of home. Their creative is taken special care on the out of home space, okay, which according to me, global, all these clients are not non-existence in India. Some of them are, but not all. So I think most of the Indian clients or some of the Indian clients or some of the international clients need to take a look at the creative separately. And I believe creative agency doesn't do enough. They are sitting in air conditioned environment, they will not be able to create what is out of form as a media. Their audience behave differently, their car moves differently, their uh, outside condition is very, very different. Now they have no excuse because it's a television screen is equivalent to, you know, television on steroid is something what is in out of form. Yeah. It is on steroid. Okay. So it you can blow it up that big and you can do whatever you want to do. So there is no excuse at all. And we will make sure that I am building a full set creative team. Okay. We are going to challenge each of the creative guys. Okay. We are going to create separately content and we are going to present that to client. So if not, they listen to us, they will at least start pushing to their own creative agencies saying this has to be done. And I'm hugely passionate about it. What I believe I'll make sure I'll get it done. Okay. And it will be done and it will be soon couple of years time, I'm telling you when I started in Ogilvy creative team inside Ogilvy and these creative guys used to be multimedia creative guys. 
it became a phenomena in the industry every agencies have creative people today the multimedia creative people now i am talking about pure play communication creative guys right okay in the business and it's the need because if television has a different creative creative guys if digital media has a different, uh, different creative guys this is a different audience so there has to be a different creative team to work on this and they should be master in this space so why not because let's television guys are not doing justice to this out of home creative guys a creative team and end of the day who is spending money client and it's going to waste unless they do a right creative so therefore i am i'm very very sure uh, also my bigger objective is to contribute back to the industry so i feel that it is due it is long due because otherwise client will you know we can keep on talking about industry research and roi and all of that but first what can be addressed is the creative so right. let 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 it be addressed immediately so you know when we look at all the creatives uh, that we get to see from various parts of the world here yeah, from the times square to the piccadilly uh, lights to all of that the creatives are so brilliant that very often we feel why not in india perhaps with initiatives like yours we will get to see more of those in india uh, my final question before i let you go navelu is that you know as the indian ovation industry begins to grow uh, we often talk about how the global nature is coming to come to india but do you envision a scenario where the indian companies are actually going to establish more of their global footprints see uh, it's a it's a difficult question to answer uh, because Uh, do i have an ambition i have uh, is it too early to uh, talk about that ambition it's really early but that's an ambition and 100% uh, sure end of the day if if techies are dominating indian techies are dominating global world i'm sure indian minds can dominate tech completely complete world and the way india is right now in terms of your population in terms of your potential uh, in terms of even even if you look at the screen size and the way uh, you know the growth stories or growth growth momentum is i won't be surprised and maybe maybe i will start that beginning let me wish uh, idea cafe the very best in that actually creating that global story uh, but finally i mean we know nabindu the entrepreneur nabindu the oh leader uh, I've been doing the person. What are your personal interests like? You know, other than business and work, you know, are there any creative pursuits that you have, or what are your interests? See, my wife keeps saying that uh, you know, till the time I don't involve you in uh, business, I don't disturb you when you are at work or you think about work, uh, uh, because other than that, you are you become cranky and you become you know you show less interest. But I recently found. <laughs> my uh, some one more interest and in that happened in last 2 3 years so i went and uh, you know invested some monies in agriculture uh, agricultural land and there i started putting in uh, time once a week 100% time 5 6 hours uh, so it was primarily for building a staycation so because business i am a businessman in the day but eventually it is pulling me towards nature and uh, i am trying to build a fantastic so i i uh, i become really interested about nature and i started you know doing culture about the you know farming and stuff so uh, hopefully it is too early because about one year back i gotten that uh, land and i started spending a lot of time with the farmer and trying to understand what happens so that's a new interest and that's, that's keeping me busy and i'm really really happy about that absolutely yeah. interesting you know you not only have uh, food for thought but you also have a thought for food so that's yeah. a fabulous way to go forward with you it's been an amazing time talking to you today and uh, a very best wishes on behalf of media for growth for a great great uh, journey ahead thank you so much thank you thank you very much thank you very much for calling me over thank absolutely. you bye bye